Good morning. Good morning. John, this is, this is the new way, the Skype way. <laughs> I know, it's, uh, it's a little less personal, but we're, uh, we're still here. Yeah, well, we are in a crisis, and we have to follow instructions. We have right. to maintain that distance, and there is no greater distance than a Skype way. <laughs> right. Yeah, it works just as well. Exactly. We get the point across. John, we are in the crisis, and this is affecting Yonkers greatly. Okay, uh, I look at the numbers. I know that has been lots of confirmed cases in Yonkers. Right. Uh, I believe by now over 300. I could be wrong here and there, but around that much. Yeah, you're right. As of uh, yesterday morning, there was 301 cases reported in Yonkers. And uh, some fatalities too. Uh, as of right now, we haven't heard of uh, any fatalities. At, at least I haven't heard of any fatalities as part of that number. One of the questions that I asked uh, yesterday of the administration, and they just didn't have the information just yet from the Health Department of Westchester County, is of the reported cases, how many at this point have recovered? Uh, how many of those are either in the hospital or at home? Um, and so that's some of the information that, that they're working on trying to get as it trickles down from the state and then Westchester County. Well, we spoke, we spoke with um, someone in Yonkers whose aunt passed away due okay. to coronavirus. So uh, okay. I'm trying to give the, the information the best way I can, but you right. know, there's always a little room for, the, for error because you cannot confirm what people tell you. Sure. Now, John, in your district, do you know of any cases affecting your particular district? We don't. Uh, and it's a question that a lot of the council members have. Um, but unfortunately, because of HIPAA regulations, uh, we do not have exactly where the people are located who have uh, COVID-19. So all we have is a general uh, number in Yonkers. And like I said, one of the questions I asked was, well, how many of the 301 are located in either St. Joseph's or St. John's hospitals? Um, and, and we just don't, we don't have that information. So the HIPAA law, you know, prevents the authorities to give you the locations. I thought it was just names of the patients and, and records of the patients. Also location? Yeah, right. So right now it's... It's also location. Uh, the information that the city is trying to obtain uh, is to get a general idea of exactly who it is. Um, but that information would only be given to our first responders, so that this way, if they do need to, uh, to well, house, right? If they do need to go to someone's home, then they would know. Well, you know, that's another element that it's causing kind of. Uh, I'm going to use the word pen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I've been getting a lot of emails and texts saying, look, we know there is a lot of cases in Yonkers. We heard about this number, but we as a resident are very afraid because they might be our neighbor. They might be a place where we go shop. We might right. be a cashier who we paid our bill to. We need to know in order to avoid certain areas, Right. I know that, you know, you've got to maintain a distance, but when you hang out somebody's money or somebody breathes or things happen, people are getting scared because they need to know where this, you know, where this is. Sure. Well, right now you have to assume that, uh, uh, so right now we have 301 reported cases, right? So that's 0.15% of our population. It's not even 1% of our population here in Yonkers uh, have reported to, to have it. And of the people who have reported uh, positive, um, each of them are experiencing something different. Some are really experiencing the full effect of the virus. Others uh, are, are just feeling a little fatigue. Uh, and so they'll wait through that quarantine period. I spoke to someone the other day that uh, had tested positive, uh, but he felt fine. You know, he didn't feel the effects. Uh, and then some other people, you know, feel the full effects. Uh, I haven't spoken to anyone or, or have heard of anyone um, who's in the hospital uh, or in ICU, so I, I don't have any personal experience in, you know, in, in the effect of it. You know, see, John, you're not out there like I am. 
and uh, I guess in, in, in connection with the people in Yonkers, like I am, because you know you have your district. You know, I have belong to the entire Yonkers. Sure. I have spoken to to people who have their own families who have tested positive and they are at home. Yep. And don't even want to bring food to their families. They are afraid of any contact whatsoever. They, they, they bring things and they leave it outside. They, they go and then they have to come back. They're doing everything that they can to prevent any contact. Right. I, I mean, I understand that they don't want to spread it and they don't want to, 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 to get the virus. And I can totally understand that. You have to remember, too, that uh, even if, if, if you touch something or, or shake the hand of someone with the virus, it doesn't mean you're going to get the virus. Uh, the virus enters our body through our mouth and our eyes. So once you, that's why, uh, that's why if, if you watch the news, regardless of what network, they will tell you, constantly wash your hands wash your hands because don't touch your face don't touch your eyes don't put your hands in your mouth um and and because that's really how you you know you can contract the virus if if you accidentally you know you're a little tired or you have an itch and you rub your eye well you know ultimately that's uh one of the ways by which you get the virus uh there are people who who live in the same home as people who, who have tested positive for the virus um and, and they've pos- tested negative. So it, it, it's, look, it, I think this is new for a lot of people. Uh, businesses are closed, schools are closed, uh, society has changed in the last couple of weeks, and so you can understand why people are panicking. Um, but if you just listen to, I think Governor Cuomo's done a very good job of putting information out there. Uh, he's out there every single day, and if you just listen to some of the things that he's telling us, and that that the doctors on the news are telling us is just keep washing your hands, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Um, and and you know, hopefully in the next few weeks we'll hit a peak and and before sometime before the summer we'll be back to some sense of, of normalcy. But we really don't know. And I think that's why people are panicking too. Is uh, right, Ben? Because they don't we don't have an end date. And so when we don't have an end date. I think that just makes people worry that this is going to go on and on and on and on. John, maybe you want to correct that statement. You know, don't give no dates because, you know, we heard by Easter everything will be over. It might not turn out to be that way. Don't give that date by summer because we we just don't know. This is waters that we never navigated before. Yeah, no, no one knows. No one knows what the end date. And I certainly don't think it's going to be Easter. As as nice as that would be and as positive uh, as people want to feel about that date, I don't think that's quite the date. Yeah, we want to be positive, but th- at the same time, we need to be realistic. Because if right. we are not realistic and take this, you know, in a, in a light way, oh, it's just the flu, then maybe we don't take all the precautions necessary that we should take right. and spread this disease. Because look, it was only a, a, a week and a half ago, more or less, that uh, the story, you know, this thing been going on, and we asked, uh, we asked the mayor, we asked the public school officials, we went to a couple of schools to interview, and we didn't have a single case. At least that's what they said. Any, we didn't have a confirmed case. Let me let me rephrase that. The cases were already there; they just were not confirmed. Because no tests had been taken. And now all of a sudden, we have over 300. Right. Now, what about the, the, the business people, not just in your district, John, but everywhere in Yonkers? Because regardless if you are a councilman for the district, you're still a, a, a Yonkers man. And this is sure. affecting people everywhere, including your business that is not in your district. Yeah, how, right. How is that affecting you? Well, yeah, yesterday morning, uh, my wife and I and, and the three kids took a walk uh, from our home down to McLean Avenue, which is in my district and is close. Uh, and we went in just to grab bagels and, and walked back home. Um, it was a beautiful morning, so we thought we'd go for a little walk, get some fresh air. And as we're walking, y- you see all of the businesses that, that have had to shut their doors, whether they be bars and restaurants or a florist or a barber shop. And so many of those businesses don't necessarily own their buildings. 
um, and and they do pay rent. And and okay, if if they're going to have maybe a little break, maybe the landlord's willing to to defer their rent, but it's a deferral of rent, right? So at some point they're going to have to catch up on that and pay it. Okay. And you can't expect that these small businesses now that have just shut their doors, maybe had to lay off employees, um, are going to just pile on this this debt. And I'm, I, I'm today I plan on really diving in to get a sense of what this two trillion dollar package looks like. Um, you know, in, in first reading of of this bill, it looks like there is a, a, a lot of pork in there that may not be getting down to Main Street or McLean Avenue uh, to, to really help the businesses that have had a that were forced to shut their door so that they could be socially responsible. And, and that's what they are. They're being socially responsible. They shut their doors uh, and they decided, OK, you know, we're going to you know, we need to, to hunker down here just like everyone else. And I can give you the example just here in, in my business. Uh, out of 27 employees, I, I had to lay off 25 of them. Uh, <clears throat> two, two of the uh, cooks uh, were able to stay on, but nowhere near the hours that they previously had. Uh, and, and they're working with me here uh, throughout the course of the week. So, you know, I'm here. Last week, I, I put in 85 hours uh, here at the brewery, and, and I have some lag time in between, which is nice. So I can, you know, really dive in and, and stay on top of what's going on both here in the city and 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 do what we can to try to get these people back to work but right now it's a waiting game um so we've had we try to support some of the small businesses out in the area we'll buy lunch or or breakfast from them and and some of them have come and and they'll you know do the same here and we just try to to keep everyone you know working as best we can or we pass along information so for example yesterday and I'll send it to you, and if you could put this out, it'd be great. Um, but I plan on sending this to small businesses because Health First Insurance Company uh, is is out there ready and willing to help uh, employees that have been laid off uh, if they don't have health insurance. So they can provide them with free health insurance. They have programmings that'll, uh, programs that will provide them this insurance. Uh, and I'll send you that information if you want to post maybe somewhere on your website, but uh, or on on social media. But I think it would be a you know great resource. So look, uh, it, it's going to be a difficult time, and I just hope that our elected officials in Washington did the right the right thing by uh, this country, especially by the, the the people who've had to shut their businesses. Because you know you take a small business like mine, and I have a small business. I, I employ 27 people. Um, but of those 27 people, I buy produce from one vendor who employs hundreds of people. I, I, buy, uh, I, I buy meats and, and poultry and, and other things from another vendor that employs another couple hundred people. I buy you know, beer or liquor or soda from other companies that, again, it, it's just it's a trickle effect. And you think about I, I know people have criticized the president for constantly mentioning Boeing, but uh, someone who's a customer who came in for some lunch yesterday uh, who is, works in the manufacturing industry said, you know why he mentions Boeing so much is because you may have a company in the middle of the country who makes little widgets uh, for Boeing that employs 50 people and then they have to ship those through a company that may employ another couple you know another 50 people and then they are just part of a much larger network of people and the next thing you know just like in my small business uh, that one business is really employing you know thousands and thousands of people through the, the supply chain and so this is gonna be a real effect on on you know our community not just here in Yonkers, but throughout New York State, throughout the country. And so you really, I really, really hope that as I dive into this $2 billion, uh, $2 trillion bill, that the money is being directed where it really needs to go. And that's to, to help offset uh, the, the loss to our economy. And so, you know, I, uh, yesterday I called uh, upon uh, the budget committee uh, at the city of Yonkers to hold a virtual meeting, you know, sort of like this, but on a, on a conference uh, 
system that would allow the public to participate and listen in. But as the city council people, we approve our the budget. You know, we control the purse strings in the city. That's that's our role as city council people. And you know, with this shutdown, there's going to be a, a serious loss of of revenue from sales tax, income tax, uh, hospitality taxes, like for example, with our hotels. And so we need to get a good handle of what that loss looks like and how we're gonna not only address it in next year's budget, but also in this year's budget. We may need to make some tough choices or, or you know, work with the administration to, to make some of these tough choices to uh, get through this fiscal year. Sure, that this is going to affect us in more ways that uh, we are seeing it right now. Right now, we just seen the right. stores closed, but it might even affect uh, taxes for the next for the next year. The impact right. is much it, it's going to be greater than we are foreseeing. Now, John, you have a small business, but you are a, a restaurant business, right. and uh, other businesses have to close completely, no source of income whatsoever, shut right. down the door. At least restaurants, business like yours, uh, people can still call in and order some food and pick up or have the food delivered, right? Am right. I correct? That's right. So in a business like mine and, and other restaurants, if they chose to stay open and do deliveries, now deliveries were such a, a small, small fraction of what we had normally done beforehand. And now it's it's our entire source of revenue, and that so we've had change. a. You see, that might change. Perhaps right, right. things like yours should focus a little bit, a little bit more on the send out for moments like this. Right, exactly, and 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 you know, in every obstacle, uh, you may come out with with some right. some change or positive, and and maybe our, our takeout business will pick up and maybe the same for for many other businesses like uh you know like we discussed before we don't know when this is going to end and people do have that fear of going out right now and and they may have even when the governor comes out and says okay you can go back to work okay you can you know get back to to to, to life uh people may still not feel comfortable going out right away and and may still continue to, to order in or order their their uh food from the supermarket in um and so, yes, you know, this could be something for a lot of restaurants that their their takeout business starts to increase. But we decided, you know, at, at the very least, to, you know, we're still going to have rent to pay. We're still going to have bills to pay. And so if we could generate a little bit of revenue uh, and keep at the very least two people working, that's great. And that's what we were able to do. Um, and and so we've started to do the, the takeout business. We're trying to be creative, so we'll run a special every single day. Um, and the governor, one of the things he, he did do in working with the state liquor authority is he's allowing bars and restaurants, uh, or if you have a liquor license, as long as you're serving food and selling food for takeout, you can also sell uh, beer or wine. And so there's a lot of you know, really creative restaurants out there who are doing a, a bottle of wine with an order over 50 or $60 or so, every, you know, these are, these are small business owners. These are people who are very creative and, and they're being creative in a time when they need to be. So, uh, I think we're all trying to just make the best of it. And, uh, like always Yonkers comes together. We've, we've had so many people from all over Yonkers who are just now seeing you know, seeing us somewhere, maybe on social media, or people are sharing the information, and they're buying more and more from from local businesses or trying to support local businesses. And that's that's been something I've been trying to promote. Is just please support your small local businesses right now because um, when this is all said and done, we don't want to see you know uh, uh, for rent signs all over our city or or all over our state. Now, you know one thing that concerns me? Uh, actually, when we interviewed the mayor, I asked him that question. The mayor, uh, I see lots of people still playing ball in parks. Mm -hmm. And he told us, well, that's a, that's a no-no. Okay? People cannot be gathering. Nothing wrong with walking, going to the park, walking around, maintaining their distance. 
from one person who's coming this way and that way. Nothing wrong with it. But we are seeing a lot of people in best, you know, in basketball fields, playing ball, contact, <coughs> coughing, breathing heavy. Sure. You know, some people are seeing this more like young, you know, young folks. Mm -hmm. They are invisible. Uh, you know, they, they can do whatever, that nothing is going to happen to them. And hopefully, nothing will happen to them. But right. those have grandparents at home, they have, you know, elderly parents, cousins, uncles. So, a word for those guys that uh, are still playing ball? Well, uh, this, starting this past week, they can no longer play ball uh, well, in our yes, parks. Because we, we took... Uh, the parks department has gone around and they've taken all the, the basketball hoops down. Um, and if they haven't gotten to every single park, they will. Uh, that was one of the things the mayor told us yesterday, is that uh, all of the uh, children's playgrounds are officially closed. And uh, they're beginning to take down the basketball hoops or backboards so that this way they're not promoting people to go out and, and play ball in the parks. And, and like you said, you know, you can go out for a walk, keep your social distancing. Uh, you can go out for a walk. Yesterday was a gorgeous day. There were a lot of people walking around, uh, both on McLean Avenue, uh, in Tibbetts Brook Park, on the waterfront, and that's fine. But just keep your distance for the, you know, for the time being. And again, make sure if you touch anything, wash your hands, wash your hands. Uh, anytime I have someone who comes in and out of of my business to pick up food, uh, I immediately take out the Clorox wipes and I wipe everything. I wipe the doors, I wipe the handles, I wipe the, the, the top of the bar. And so we just want to make sure that we continue to keep everything clean. You know, uh, I think people need to understand that mayor, you, and other council people, that you are not babysitters, you know, that we should be responsible. Okay? And, and act in a way that we are supposed to in order not to spread this thing. As an adult, I know that right. I, you know, it has been advised not to gather. Then I don't. I don't see why some people have to do it. And we have to go around and remove the, the basketball hoops. Look, you shouldn't be there. You can't be there. You might contaminate other people. So stay away. But... Right. Uh, but well, yeah. Uh, this past week, I, I put a little PSA up on uh, my social media because it bothered me coming into work l a week ago, so last Saturday. And as I'm driving in, and it was a nice sunny day, a little cool, but it was nice and sunny. And as I passed the post office on Yonkers Avenue, I couldn't believe the number of senior citizens I saw going in and out of that post office. And it, it made me a little upset because here... We've closed people's businesses. We've we've shut down their livelihood, so that this way we could try to to reduce the spread of the virus. And who are we really trying to protect? We're trying to protect those who are immunocompromised and our senior citizens mostly, right? Because we know that, uh, for example, in Italy, the average age of death in Italy from the virus is 80 years old. And so we know that it mostly affects people who are much older, 70 plus. And so, not, and not that 70 is old, but older. And so it's important that we also remind them, maybe there are family members of ours, or maybe they are, they are neighbors. We know they have a routine. We know they want to get out and it's not easy to stay home, but they need to stay home. Um, because if we can keep the, the spread of the virus down uh, and they don't get sick, then you know, the sooner this will start to wrap up. I, I agree. But now, you know, let's talk a little bit about the forgotten ones, John. There is a sure. group of people that are forgotten. Okay. okay. The homeless. The homeless, they are forgotten. Uh, I don't know if you have much homeless in your district, but I know that you do in your place of business, around your place of business. Right. And... Uh, those folks don't care much about themselves, but that does not mean that they, they might not be infected. Right. They might not care about themselves, but they walk around in front of the store. They might touch something. Then maybe uh, somebody that comes to pick up your food touch the same thing. Now, when I say you, I mean any business around uh, around the area. Sure. You know, so I would say that they're, they're certainly not forgotten. 
um, Westchester County, who oversees the, the, the homeless programs and services, they, they have a lot of services that are available uh, in this general area uh, along uh, Getty Square, Palisade Avenue, and they work with a lot of not-for-profits that provide programs. Um, I, I can tell you with 100% certainty that many of the people who do not participate in those programs, they just refuse to. They don't want to. And, and I know, you know, logically speaking, it doesn't make sense. They can go to a place where there's a, sh you know, uh, a roof over their head and they can get out from the elements, but they don't want to. They, they would rather be on the street. And I know that that doesn't sound logical to so many of us, but they, they really don't. And, and many of the people who you do find uh, that refuse those services are battling some sort of substance abuse. Um, and and I, I'm telling you from experience, I, I see it often. And, and you want to be able to help people. And the county does. The county has programs. And they, they have uh, places for people to go, all within this general area. It's not like they have to go very far, but they just refuse. Now, going into CBS, uh, down here on Prospect Street the other day, I was walking in and a girl came up and said, John Rubo. And it was a young girl who went to school, to elementary school with my sister. And she's homeless and she's been on the street. And I asked her if she was going up to Palisade Avenue for, you know, to the shelter or to a program. And she said, no, no, I, you know, I don't want to go up there. I'm, I'm just trying to get by. And, and she has a substance abuse problem. And so she refuses to use the services that are available and, 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 you know, for us to help them. And, you know, other than picking them up and putting them in the service, you can't keep people there either. They, if they want to leave, they will leave. And, and it's a battle. And, but you're right. We don't know how and if this is spreading, um, you know, among the homeless community, at least right now, uh, in, in, you know, I haven't, I, I see the same people out here every day. So I don't think anyone's been affected. I, certainly none of them are, are sick, but it, you're right. It, and once one person gets it, it, it does become viral and, and very, no. and as we know, this is very contagious, COVID-19. Yeah. John, we did not know how many people were affected in Yonkers until we started the testing. So we have no idea how many of those homeless folks are infected unless they are tested. So maybe there is a large number of them that are infected, but since they don't take tests, they couldn't care less, we have no idea of counting or determine how many are infected. But you know, for every story that you have of uh, a homeless that does not want to be helped, and I know you're telling the truth because I have encountered a few, I can give you lots of stories of some that want to be helped. All right. Not fine. The other day, I was I stopped by McDonald's because I have to confess I love McDonald's. I like McDonald's coffee. That's my favorite <laughs> coffee. <laughs> there was uh, a guy that I know, actually, before he became homeless, and as I'm making my order, I look down and I recognize him. I said, what's going on? And he tells me, well, I lost this, I lost that, I have no place to stay. And uh, I said, look, are you taking care of yourself? Are you making sure you're maintaining the distance? You know what it tells me? That's the least of my worries. I wish I would have it. I would get it so I can get out of my misery because I don't care. And if he doesn't care, I'm sure that, that one, it can be many more just like him. But when right. they don't care, John, they can put the life of others and the health of others at risk. Right, right. So um, I, I don't I don't have the answers. I'm not the councilman. I didn't run for election. You mm -hmm. did. So right. did you. Yeah. But well, I, I will tell you the county the county I think uh, in my opinion does do a, a good job at offering programs and having feet on the street. Uh, they were very responsive when people had started to congregate and and this was just starting to to happen. Um, they came in and. and they try, they're really trying to force the social distancing even among that community. Now, the social distance is voluntary, right, John? Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
yesterday I went to, I went hiking upstate. Okay. And, and when I came back, it was a little late. That's why we couldn't do the interview yesterday. Sure. It was kind of getting dark, and I passed by Gary Square. And Gary Square was full of people together, you know, by the, by the Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. So okay. Um, the reason I'm asking is because there is police officers passing by. So it's voluntary or it's mandated? Well, it's it's mandated that they they don't congregate in more than ten people. Um, I think if if our police officers see you know a large group of people, they're going to try to to disperse them a bit. Uh, but I haven't noticed or seen any any large groups of people of, of even five or more in, in my travels around the city. Doesn't mean that they're not happening. Um, but all we can do is continue to encourage people you know through programs like yours on social media. Uh, they're certainly doing it on television. Just try to continue telling people, please, you know, uh, don't congregate. You know, keep your distance from one another. Obviously, if it's family, you know, it's a little bit different. But you want to really try to, to keep that social distancing. You, know, you could even go in into the supermarkets now. They're really trying to reduce the number of people that are going in and out of the supermarkets uh, to, you know, in some cases, 70, no more than 75 in the store at one time. Now, John, another group of, uh, of people that uh, actually, you know, they risk their lives to save ours. They keep mm -hmm. it safe, they keep it protected. But somehow, they are not keeping themselves protected as much as they can. And I understand that sometimes it's difficult. You know, it's our first responders, the police, fire. Uh, EMS, uh, Empress EMS, they have to go out there. Yes, they take all the precautions, you know, the distance or all that, but somehow they don't have enough, probably, gloves, uh, masks. What do right. you say to those guys? Well, um, it, this, it, this is a difficult time for them. And, and just like everyone else, this is uh, completely new, right? Uh, so, and this is one of the reasons why we want to get the information on um, where the 300 plus people within the city of Yonkers are located that currently have tested positive so that this way when our first responders do respond, they can be more prepared. But uh, the, the, both the police department and fire department have implemented very strict protocols that everyone is following. And uh, we have the best interest to try to keep our, our officers uh, and our, our firefighters protected. Uh, we don't want to see the spread through the fire department. We don't want to see the spread through the police department because that would be uh, devastating to, to our first responders and to the city. So uh, we're really trying to protect everyone as best we can. But you have to understand just that the, uh, the, the firehouse itself doesn't quite always allow for uh, easy social distancing. You know, the, the, the men in our firehouse and our firefighters are in, in a contained place, um, but they've tried to reduce certain responses so that this way, uh, maybe our fire department is not responding to something that uh, a, another entity can can get to. So that this way, we're reducing that risk of them getting uh, COVID-19. Uh, and I don't mean to uh, I, I don't mean to cut off, but um, we uh, we we opened the business about five minutes ago, and the uh, the orders are starting to come in. So I'm very well, grateful least, for that. <laughs> at least you're getting some orders, and that's good news. Yeah. Well, guys, you know this was an interview with uh, Councilman John Rubel. Thank He's you. He's concerned about the city, so we needed to interview him and you know get an update from him, you know, and inform the city of what's going on. John, thank you, thank and you. Uh, we, we I, hope to stay well, you and your family. You too. I appreciate it. And just so you know, I sent out a press release yesterday. Like I said, it's important now that the city council come together for our budget committee uh, and we start to, to talk to the city administration. They, Mayor Spano and his administration has been very open and, and has communicated often with the city council. Um, he's willing to have calls every day if he needs to. Um, but now we need to have a budget committee meeting so that this way we can talk about what this year's fiscal uh, impact will look like on our budget and then of course next year as we prepare I know the mayor's already preparing his budget for 
the next fiscal year. So I just wanted to put that out there. Please, if you're watching this, stay tuned and join our um, virtual virtual uh, committee meetings. And John, please, you know, I didn't receive your press release yesterday. Make sure that, okay. that you know, sure I get that, out to you. yes, thank you, sir. So All until right. next time and stay safe, John. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye.